Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all again. Third Sunday we've did this. Four Sundays since Brother Bill uh, shut the church down. Thank God for this technology. Amen. Let's uh, start out with prayer, please. Lord, we thank you so much for your blessings on our lives, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this technology you've given us, Lord, that we might still congregate together even, even in these times, Lord. Lord, we just pray that your spirit will be upon this service, Lord, that you will let it touch hearts, Lord, and if there be any lost out there, Lord, we pray that you'll put conviction down upon them, Lord. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for your mercy, grace, and your goodness. In your name I pray, amen. Well, it's real good to see you all again been a long week for me anyway this yesterday was about the longest day i've had uh, i wish it would have been sunny so we could have got outside more but thank god that we're saved and there's no fear even in these dark times amen thank god for it well let's start out with a song and i'm going to be doing page number 155 in our hymn book where could i go Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go, oh, where could I go, seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end, where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them every one. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go, oh, where could I go, seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to save me in the end, where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. I've been clinging on to him this whole week. I've been clinging ever since it started. Oh, ever since I got saved, I've been clinging to Jesus. Amen. Clinging to him. He is my rock and my salvation. Woo! Thank God for that. Amen. Thank God for it. Well, thank you, Miss Rayetta, for the birthdays. I'm glad I saw that on there this morning because I, I, I knew about Jarrett, but I didn't know about the other one. So let's see. Philip Cheney, the first. 
Bobby Creamer was on the first. Judy McMichael was on the second. Ray Blythe was on the second. Joe Jones was on the second. And Jarrett Blevins was on the fourth. So we want to send out a big happy birthday to them. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again means salvation. How many have you? And in the tradition of our church, happy birthday! Woo! Happy birthday to you guys. I hope you had a good day even in uh, isolation. Hope you had a good birthday. Well, today is Palm Sunday. And I wrote this down for anybody who might not know what Palm Sunday is. Palm Sunday, one week before Christ's crucifixion, he was welcomed into Jerusalem. Palm branches were placed in his path. He was treated like royalty. Those same people would scream crucify him a week later. A week from today will be Easter Sunday. Well, Friday is when he was crucified. Sunday is when he rise, rose again. But today is Palm Sunday, and I'm thankful that Christ was willing to go there. He didn't have to. He knew what was coming, but I'm thankful he was willing to do it. Amen. So thankful that he was willing to, to bear that cross for me. Amen. Well, let's do one more song. Going to do page number 19. Just a closer walk with thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to Thee. Just a closer walk with Thee. Grant it, Jesus, this my plea. Daily let it ever be Just a closer walk, walk with Thee Through this world of toils and snares If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? Let me walk, dear Lord, close to Thee. Just a closer walk with Thee. Grant it, Jesus, this my plea. Day let it ever be just a closer walk walk with thee when my feeble life is o'er time for me will be no more guide me to that peaceful shore let me walk dear lord close to thee just a closer walk with thee grant it jesus this my plea daily let it ever be just a closer walk walk with thee amen say it again thank god for jesus amen thank god for jesus thank god for jesus thank god that he is here that he was willing to take up the cross and die for me boy 
I've been thinking a lot about Easter. I hate that we ain't going to be able to be in church together this Easter, but I'll tell you what, I saw something on Facebook. No matter if we're celebrating with eggs or with Easter bunnies, I am celebrating a risen Savior. Amen. I celebrate it every day of my life. Every time I pray and thank God that he was willing to die for me. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Well, last week, I didn't have a sermon, but I gave a testimony. And ever since I did that, I, I've been thinking about my second sermon I ever, I ever uh, put together with the help of the Lord. And that's what I want to preach this morning. I title it, The Pig Pen. I'm going to read Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. And if you please bow your heads, I'm going to pray. Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you for Christ that died on the cross for us. Lord, we pray, Father, that if there be any out here that hear this sermon, Lord, that it would touch their hearts, that they would fall down up on their knees, Lord, and they might turn their life over to you and get their life right and get it on the right track, a track to heaven. Lord, we love you. We thank you in your blessed holy name. Amen. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24 says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. This is Christ given a parable. It's called the prodigal son. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And divide them unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And this is my key verse, verse 16. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. He found himself in the pig pen. Amen. At 17, I shared this last, last week. At 17, I rebelled against my, heavenly, my earthly father. Dad and mom raised me in church, but I never truly repented. I was a good church boy. Went to church with mom and dad day in, Sunday and Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday night. But, it, but I was just going to church with them. Being saved is a personal thing. There was fun in sin for a season. By the age of 25, the life of sin had turned into a life of meaninglessness. In 97, God saved me from that life of sin. And I shared this last week. In my brother's trailer, after a night of partying, I woke up that next morning and I was under old-time conviction. God was speaking to me. He was heavy on me. He was saying, Heath, what are you doing? Why are you living this life that you're in? And there in my brother's trailer, I fell down on my knees at his sofa, and I turned my life over to God. Thank God that he saved me. Hallelujah. Thank God that he saved me. This is a hard hard thing for me to confess. But I was like the prodigal son. After God had saved me and taken, my, taken me out of that life, I turned my back on him. But I, I, ain't, I ain't there yet. I lived my life for the Lord. I read God's word. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I talk with God continually. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Life was great in the Father's house. Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. I was doing God's will. I started driving the church bus at my church, picking kids up and bringing them to church and a vacation Bible school. Boy, I was on a good road. I was really on fire. I was living for God. I was doing everything I should. John 4, 36 says, And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. The Lord had a purpose for me. He was leading me down that path of righteousness. Philippians 2, 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Here's what I was getting upset about a few minutes ago. In 99, I began to backslide. And I know exactly when it happened. I know exactly when I took that first step down the wrong path. I started sliding back to the slop of the pig pen. God was directing me. I know that he wanted me to go into the army. I remember being at my grandpa's when he was sick and I was taking care of him. And I'd see those National Guard commercials come on the TV. And God just kept on telling me, Heath, I want you to do that. And so I did. And I went through basic training and Christ was right there with me. He gave me strength through all that. I never faltered or failed through basic training because I had the strength of God within me. Amen. I know that for sure. And after I made it through basic training... We went to AIT, and that's a schooling. That's where you start to learn your trade in the military. Now, I remember one of the guys in my squad came up to me and asked me if I wanted to go to this lounge with him, and I said yes. And when we was there, he asked me if I wanted a beer, and I said yes. And that was the first step. I wasn't completely backslidden at that point, but that was that first step. I made a wrong choice. The path to the pig pen is not a jumping off of a cliff, but a coasting downhill. When you decide to quit stepping forward for God, you start sliding backwards towards the slop. I then quit going to church. I quit reading my Bible. I quit praying. I started hanging out with the wrong crowd. I started allowing myself to do things I knew that were not right in the eyes of the Lord. Galatians 5, 9 says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Anybody that's a baker or done any type of baking, when it comes to adding yeast, it just takes a little bit. And that will make all the flour rise. Just that little bit of yeast. And that's what it took for me. That little bit of sin that I allowed to get in. That little bit. That first step that I allowed myself to take. It started leading me. It, so I started sliding backwards. On the way to the pig pen, I slowly turned my back on my heavenly father. And turned towards riotous living. I had become a fool. Proverbs 26, 11 says, As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. That was me. God had saved me from that life I was living. He had taken me out of it. I had got myself planted on the rock. I was doing what God wanted me to. I was living a life that was pleasing to the Lord. And I allowed one little thing to get me into a backslidden state. That one little step led me all the way back to the pen, into the slop. 
You have to be very careful of what you allow to get into your life. By New Year's Eve of 99, I was completely backslidden. In the pig pen. Life started losing meaning again, living day after day with no true happiness. Alcohol and drugs filled the void in me, started getting in trouble with the law. Before that, riotous living had taken over my life completely. It took away my joy, took away truly good times, took away all happiness. By the end of 01, I was stuck. Stuck in the slop. Riotous living had taken its toll on me. Proverbs 13, 15 says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. I was like Jonah stuck in the belly of a whale. There was no escape. God was showing me that life without him was meaningless. I started thinking on how good life was when I was serving the Lord. In my father's house, his servants had it better than me. In February of 2002, I turned my back, my life back over to the Lord. Mom and Dad, thank you, Mom and Dad, I love you. Mom and Dad asked me to church. And I said I'd go. I don't remember the sermon. I was under conviction from the moment I stepped into the church doors. God was reminding me how much better life was with him. He told me he would use me as an instrument to see my brother and sister saved. I jumped over the pew in front of me and I hit that altar. And I hit it hard. I wanted that life back. I wanted out of that slop. I wanted to be back on the path of righteousness. Hosea 14.4 says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. God could have found me unworthy after what I did, but he was like the father in the parable. He brought forth the best robes and put them on me. He put a ring on my hand and shoes on my feet. He welcomed me back into his communion with open arms. The pig pen was not able to get me back to its slop. I made God a promise that I would never turn back again, but always move forward. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. I left that church unafraid to face what I had made in my life. I knew that God was with me. Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Woo! Well, that's a good verse for right now, ain't it? That's a real good verse for right now. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Praise God, I know that to be the truth. Eighteen years later, here I am. The Lord has enriched my life so completely, there is no looking back at the pig pen, at the slop. At God's table, the food is always the best. Amen. Are you like the prodigal son? Out there, are you like the prodigal son? Have you started moving away from the father? It's a choice over time. You don't just choose overnight to backslide. It can happen rapidly or it can be a slow sliding backwards. Warfare the, with the devil is an uphill battle. If you stall out, you quit pushing uphill, you will start sliding back down. Prayer life, prayer life may get crowded out with other interests like sports, hobbies, TV, hunting, Anything that you let come between you and the Lord, it may seem innocent, but as we fill our lives with things other than God, we are backsliding. Because we pull away from Him and go towards the other. 
You might think you are standing still, but in truth you are sliding backwards. If the devil can get you to do nothing, he is defeating you, pushing you back down. Before you know it, maybe you will allow yourself to let something into your life that you would not have when you were fiercely serving God. Once you let something in, whether it be alcohol, drugs, pornography, dirty jokes, lying, the devil has a hook in your mouth. He's hooked you. Just like that. Pulls you around by that. Gets a hook in your mouth, just like when you're fishing. He's fished you. He's got you. Before you know it, you are in the pig pen. Once you're in the slop, you feel stuck, and your abhorrence of sin is gone. It becomes easy to justify your sin. All manner of sin will become part of everyday life. The devil wants to see you completely defeated, one less soldier for the Lord. Oh, my pages are sticking together. Here's the, here's the great thing. Here it is. God will welcome you back. The Lord is one prayer away. One prayer. No matter where you find yourself. No matter how stuck in the slop you might feel. One prayer. One prayer away. Malachi 3.7 says, even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Woo! Hallelujah! He will meet you halfway in an embrace. Luke 15, 20 says, and he, this is the father from the parable. And he arose and came to his father. But, he, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I love this story. He wants to heal your backslidden state. Jeremiah 3.22 says, Return ye backslidden children, and I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Amen. He will be so happy to see you return. Luke 15, 24 says, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Woo! There's great rejoicing in heaven when, a, when one returns. Just like this with the prodigal son. Oh, God will be so happy to have you back. He'll turn your life around. He'll get you back on that road that you know you can be on. He'll turn it around. All it takes is that one prayer. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for what I've done. You were so merciful to me to save me. Please, Lord, heal my backsliding. That's all it takes. And he will. Have you ever sat at the Lord's table? Have you ever been there? Maybe you're not backslidden like I found myself, but maybe you've never been there. Never put your feet up underneath the Lord's table. Maybe you think you can't let go of the sin that's in your life. I know that that is a lot with a lot of people, especially people who drink and do drugs. They think, oh, I can't give this up. I don't have the power within me to give it up. Amen. You don't. But God does. God has the power. He is all powerful. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. Christ came and suffered the cross. We're getting ready to, to that's going to be Easter. Friday's coming, and then Easter when he rises again. Christ came and suffered the cross because we are none perfect. We all struggle with sin. But once you are saved, the Spirit will work within you and strengthen you to do things you never would have thought possible. 
If you think you can't give up that beer, you're right. You can't. But God can. That's, that's the key. Once you turn your life over to Him and the Spirit enters you, the Holy Spirit, one of the Trinity, once it enters you and it becomes part of you, you find power that you never knew you had. I know. I know. That's why I can stand here and can proclaim this without any doubt. I know. This could be your last and only chance. Boy, I thought on this one. This could be your last chance. In this day and age we're living in right now, with this virus, there's a lot of people who are dying. Lots of people. We are none promised tomorrow. Even if you're young, today could be it. This could be your last breath, your last day here on earth. This could be it. You might walk out your door and get hit by a car. You might fall down with a heart attack at 20 years old and not even know you had a heart problem. You just don't know because we are none promised tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Today. James 4.14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish, vanisheth away. You ever looked at a boiling pot with steam coming up off of it? Well, that steam can just be rolling up off there. But it's just gone like that. Just gone. And that's what the Bible says our life is like. It's like a vapor. It appeareth for a little time and it just vanishes away. You could wake up tomorrow on the other side of eternity. Will he say, enter in, thou good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. There's two destinations. At the Father's table are mansions, streets of gold, and riches untold, promised on the other side of eternity. And while on earth, a life filled with a peace that patheth understanding amen thank god for that peace i feel that down deep inside me all the time right now in this in this we're living in i have no fear no fear i know that god is with me and that's that peace it passes it passes all understanding because if you don't have it you don't know what i'm talking about The pig pen offers torment forever and ever and ever on the other side of eternity. And while on earth, a life filled with emptiness. Now, I was sitting here this morning and when I was praying and thinking about my sermon, I was thinking about eternity. Our human minds can't very well comprehend what eternity is. Because we're finite. We're finite here on this earth. And our minds have a hard time of thinking about something that goes on forever. That's infinite. Can you really think about being in a place of torment forever? Not just a hundred years. Not just a little while. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Which one would you choose if you knew tonight you were going to sleep and never waking up again? Which one would you choose? Well, friend, how do you know you're not? That's a good question. How do you know you're not going to sleep tonight and never waking up again on this earth? How do you know? You might feel young. You might be young and have that feeling of nothing can harm me. I was there one time. But how do you know? Because you will die. We are all promised that. You're going to die here on earth unless the Lord comes back. How do you know today is not the last day you're going to spend here? 
I called this a no-brainer. How do you know? Is, isn't which one you will choose a stupid question? Will you choose torment or will you choose paradise? That's a really stupid question. It's a no-brainer. Let's see. On one hand, I can choose paradise. On the other hand, I can choose torment. Let's think about that for a second. That's really a no-brainer. Nobody's going to choose torment. Nobody. They're going to choose to be in paradise. Why don't you choose that today? Choose paradise. Don't let this video go off. And just quit thinking about it. Don't let that happen. Choose you this, this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. I hope this message has touched somebody's heart today. I love you. Church family, I miss you. This is our fourth Sunday out of church, and I surely do miss you all. Can't wait to be back in church with you. Y'all. We'll see you again next week. I love you. Jesus loves you. And he died for you. Remember that this holy week, the week of Easter. Remember that he died for you, that you might rise with him. Praise God. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. I love you. You all have a good week. I'm going to close this out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your son that died on the cross for us, Lord. Lord, we pray that you'll help us this week to be in your word and pray and continue with the Lord and thanking you for that, Lord. Lord, we just love you. We thank you and we praise you for all you do for us. Watch over our loved ones. Keep our elderly safe. Help the people on the front lines, Lord. Be with them. Lord, help our